Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and congratulations to making it to the summary portion of this course. Uh, what I wanted to do is just kind of quickly go over the process for solving literal equations, as well as highlight some tips and tricks and some common mistakes that I see uh, through my own math practice, as well as helping out students within my classroom and online. So basically, the process for solving a literal equation um, is the exact same process as solving you know, two-step or uh, one-step equation. It's basically to apply the reverse order of operations, meaning uh, undo addition and subtraction first and applying the uh, inverse operations you know if you are a multi if you're adding something to a variable then you subtract on both sides using the properties of equality I should uh, mention as well so basically our idea is to take our variable that we're trying to solve for isolate it and then solve so isolate it so then well when you isolate it it is solved um, the thing to remember about literal equations, though, unlike you know, linear equations, is you're not going to have a value. It's not going to be like x equals 5. You're usually going to have an expression with, one, with multiple variables and sometimes even some numbers in your answer. So some kind of tips and tricks that I like is you know, pin your variable. If you're given the equation um, era equals you know, pi r squared and you're trying to solve for r, well, then circle the r and then say, all right, what is happening to my r squared that I need to undo, right? Or circle the r, really, because you know what operations are happening to my r that I need to undo? So you'd undo multiplying by pi on both sides and then go into the square. So always look into undo what's happening to the variable. Uh, the next thing, sometimes this, I got to, it's a slippery slope with this one, and I want to be very careful with you, but a lot of times I see students, um, you know, they're working on a problem, they're like, Man, this problem is, uh, you know, I'm just not understanding, not seeing what's happening to the variable to undo. So I think it's, you know, a lot of times when you're dealing with just all variables, I think it sometimes can be confusing. So what I like to do is use, um, what I like to do is use numbers. For instance, um, circumference equals 2 pi r, right? Now a lot of times some would say like, all right, and then let's say we need to solve for r. So they even go through the step of, you know, r. And they say, all right, well, what is... You know, now what is happening to my variable? Well, I don't, you know, 2 is being multiplied, but what, you know, pi, you know, that's a, a representation of an, an irrational number. Well, so maybe it might be easier to say 2 equals, you know, let's just pretend um, 2 times 3. Let's say pi is 3, and then r, and we circle the r. Well, you can say, oh, okay, well, 2 is being multiplied by r, so I'm going to divide by 2, and 3 is being multiplied by r, so I'm going to divide by 3. And you have to do that on both sides. So that might make you sense and say, oh, okay, well, if 3 was pi, then really what I need to do is divide by pi on both sides. And, um, you know, the tough thing about this is sometimes students will do that and then they'll combine like terms and, you know, when you're not supposed to. Um, so you got to be kind of careful, but I like to a lot of times just use numbers to kind of really understand what exactly the problem is really asking me to do. Common mistakes, um, actually I got another one, like terms. So common mistakes, uh, really this kind of goes into, you know, once students, students can be masters at one-step equations and two-step equations, even multi-step with variables on one side or both sides. And then I give them a problem with all variables and everything goes out the window, right? Um, and they just kind of totally forget what are your inverse operations. Again, look at the variable. What is happening to the variable? What do I need to undo to that variable to get it by itself? And you can just say it's being multiplied by 2 pi. So I need to undo multiplying 2 pi. So it's divide by 2 pi. The next thing is a reverse order of operations. Again, you know, if I had um, plus x, students would say, oh, well, it's being multiplied by 2 pi. So I need to divide by 2 pi. But it's like, hold on. When we have multiple operations, even if it's for a literal equation, where again, we have to always have to undo addition and subtraction first. So I need to undo anything that's being added or subtracted to my variable, which is in this case would be adding x. So I need to undo that, which would be subtracting x on both sides. And the last thing is like terms. Um, a lot of times I have you know, 3x, let's do 3x plus 4y equals 10. And let's say I want to solve for y, right? So a student says, OK, well, I'll subtract 3x, subtract 3x. And then they say, well, 4y is equal to, well, what's 10 minus 3x? And they kind of totally forget that 10 is a number and 3x is a number times a variable, right? So those aren't like terms. This has an x, this does not. So you cannot combine them and say it's um, 7x or it's the number 7. It's just simply 10 minus 3x. 
all right? Um, and also another thing that, it's not a common mistake, but when you divide by four, make sure you divide the four into both of those terms. Um, we don't have to, but that is one way we simplify, especially when we have a, an equation like this for slope-intercept form. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that is my summary video. I hope you um, were able to gain a lot of experience from uh, taking this course as well as this video, and I look forward to helping you out and working with you on the next one. Thanks.